Hello friends, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Examination. Finally, we are into the techniques. We have already covered two of them, equivalence partition and boundary value analysis. And hope that's quite clear to you and you are very much understandable with those techniques and good to implement them. The next technique we will be talking as per the syllabus is decision table testing, which is again one of the specification based techniques or also called as black box testing techniques. So the next technique which we are talking about is decision table testing. Uh, there's a catch about decision table testing when they ask you sometime a question on the categories and they say that which one of these uh, option consists of a white box testing technique and they give you the options like equivalence partition, boundary value analysis, decision table testing, and decision testing. Now, when you conflict between C and D, that what is decision table testing and decision testing, just need to make sure that when it comes with a table, it is black box testing technique. Whereas it comes without table, that is decision testing, which is a white box testing technique. So just a small important information when you talk about such uh, theoretical based questions about such techniques categorization. Well, coming to decision table testing, it's one of the, again, uh, very simple and easy techniques which can be used for any such situation or scenario or given requirements, which basically have some kind of logical conditions involved in that, where you need to decide whether it is true, false, or like has yes or no involved with it. If these conditions are fulfilled, what is to be done? If these conditions are not fulfilled, what is to be done? So basically we call it as the table is created which consists of the conditions and actions of the system. So when you talk about the conditions and actions of the system, it's basically the, uh, the conditions which are asked by the system to the user and once the option is selected by the user, the action is to be taken and the outcome will be displayed or implemented for the user selection. So the decision table deals with such things where you can, you know, relate it back to your Boolean algebra where you were talking about the Boolean gates like AND gate, OR gate, and so on. And this is quite similar to that. But the best part is when you talk about ISTQB examination, all the K3 level questions like equivalence partition, boundary value analysis, decision table, and state transition testing, these are all at K3 where the prerequisite information or the information what you need to get the answer will be given to you in the table, so in the question itself. So you really don't have to create these things. It's just that you need to extract the information from the question itself and get the answer. Like looking at this one right there in the example, if you see, I've got the table decision table here, which consists of uh, the four test cases, as you can understand from your mathematics that if when there are two conditions and there are two possible inputs, you only get four cases. That is two raised to two. And here it says in case we you know we have two conditions and the possibilities, the various possibilities are true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. And based on the satisfaction of the conditions, several action will be taken by the system by for the user. So. This is all what we need to take care and understand and that is basically all simple about decision table testing when it comes to implement. But when you work with real time implementing decision table testing, you need to understand the scenario and the table will be created by you and based on the table you will be minimizing the number of test cases. So instead of creating all possible combinations, you just go with four depending on the number of conditions. If you have three conditions, then the number of test cases would be eight. So. Let's look at a quick example here to understand what we are talking about. So the question here says that, what is the expected result for each of the following test case, where the test cases are at the bottom, which says, A, city bank card member holding a silver room, and B, city non-city bank card member holding a platinum room. But let's look at the table first and understand that how to derive these things. So if you see the table, it's quite simple. They have given the two conditions to you. One is the Citibank card member possibilities. So rule one is yes, rule two is yes, rule three, rule four are no. Type of holding the room is silver, platinum, silver, platinum. So if it is yes, silver, platinum, no, silver, platinum. So this is the combination. Whereas coming to action, 
if these rules are satisfied, for example, rule one, if he is a city bag card member and holding a silver room, he must be given an upgrade for gold. Whereas if he is a person who is having the card, which is yes, and holding a platinum room, give him a silver room because he must move from platinum to silver first and then from silver to gold. So this is how you understand the table. Now, let's look at the question. The test case one says Citibank card member holding a silver room. So now, basically, it is the rule one. Rule one says the same thing what we are looking at. So Citibank card member, yes. And holding a silver room, yes. So what should happen with him? That is offer upgrade to gold luxury. So finally, let's look at the options to get the right answer. And surprisingly, we have only one option as the right answer. So we don't have a conflict at all. So you are finally done with your answer at the first stage itself. But it's always a good practice to do check with the other part of it. Because you never know when the twist happens. So let's look at the text case B. Non-city bank member holding a platinum room where non-city bank member deals with rule 3 and rule 4 and the holding a platinum room, then if you see there are no actions to be taken. That means obviously the for B, it is don't offer any upgrade. And that's the right answer that you go with such selection. So team, I think you find it quite simple and easy to understand. All you have to do is take care of the table. Based on that, apply the conditions given to you and just pick the right option. It's very simple and easy. All you have to do is put patience and understand the question. That's all. Let's look at quickly the next option or the next question for us uh, in this scenario, which will also give you a better confidence and understanding of the different possibilities, what can be asked to you. So given the following decision table, which of the following test cases and expected result is valid? Now, here, they have not given you test cases. They have given you table and directly the options, and they want you to ask you which one is valid as per the table. So, uh, let's start from the bottom this time, because the right answer is actually A, and I don't want to close it right there. But let's understand from the bottom. When you talk about the option D, uh, a person who is 43 year old in insurance class C. So, let's see here which rule follows the age of 43 and that's rule 3 where he is in also class C yes it is agency but paying a premium is uh, C premium is 100 no that is the contradict it says 70 and the excess is 1000 which is also wrong so straight away we say that the option D is invalid it's not at all as per the table Let's look at the option C. 31 years old in insurance class B. So obviously 31 year old in insurance class B, that's again rule 3 where we have 30 to 50 years of age and class B is here. So we talk about that and the premium is 70. That's correct. But at the end 2500 is not the excess. That's where finally even C is also wrong as per the table. Now let's look at option B. Age is 51 here, where that means it falls under the rule 4. Greater than 50 years, so we have 51 year old here in the insurance class C, that's true. And the premium is 100, no, that's wrong here, it is 70. And the excess is 500, and that's also wrong, it is 1000 here. So even option B is wrong. But when you look at option A, 23 year old, which would fall under the rule 2. If you see rule 2 covers the 23 age and in the premium class A, yes it is here. And then the premium is 90, correct. And the excess is 2500, absolutely correct. So the right answer is basically A. So this is what you have to do to just derive all the options back into the table to get the right answer. And I don't think that should be complicated or difficult job for anyone to do it. So it's quite simple. All you have to do is understand the technique, implement it correctly. And still, if you have any queries, I'm here to assist you. Just put it across. Let me know what I can do the best for you to make you understand. You just have something, put it as a snapshot, put it on my page. 
put it on my channel and I'll get back to you with the right justification on the right answer. So stay tuned for upcoming videos. We'll be having a few more tutorials to cover the techniques as per the syllabus. And keep watching. Obviously, do let me know if you have any queries because I'm waiting here for that. This is all for now. We have more videos coming up on the upcoming tutorials and also on the upcoming chapters of this uh, tutorial. So stay tuned for more videos. Do hit the bell icon for getting notified about the latest videos. And in case you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe as early as possible. Because we'll be having more videos about technologies and testing coming up back after this, right after this. So uh, stay tuned and uh, till then, enjoy learning. Happy learning. Take care.